a different line of sport and of course a concerning area of sport is doping in sport and now we come to the topic of the enhanced games what is that a doped olympics yeah a doped olympics this is what is being floated by a group who are deadly serious about it the idea is an alternative to the olympic games where there is no drug testing and doping is allowed the games would comprise athletics swimming weightlifting gymnastics and combat sports now a lawyer by the name of aaron de souza is the president of it and he intends to launch the first enhanced games in december 2024 they even have a launch video listen to this I am the fastest man in the world. But you've never heard of me. I have broken Usain Bolt's 100 meter record, but I can't show you my face. I am a proud, enhanced athlete. The Olympics hate me. I need your help to come out. I need your help to stop hate. I need your help for the world to embrace science. Come join me in 2024 at the first Enhanced Games and see me break the world record in public. This is actually serious. The Enhanced Games, a doped Olympics. Um, I mentioned the Laura Aaron de Souza, who's president of this. He joins us live. Uh, Aaron, I, I underline this fact. Thanks for joining us. But you're deadly serious about this, right? Oh, absolutely. We think that the presence of uh, enhancements in sports is wide and ever present. Uh, we only need to look back at the London 2012 Olympics, a great celebration of pride in, in the British nation. 150 athletes from those games uh, have been dinged by the IOC. Um, and, you know, we, we've known this uh, all along. You know, Lance Armstrong for over a decade was tailed by a journalist denying it on over 500 drug tests. Um, science is a part of our life today and should be a part of sports. Science, you call it science. I mean, the idea, as I said, is an alternative to the Olympic Games. There is no drug testing. In other words, doping is allowed. You call it the enhanced games. Why not call it the dirty games? because it's actually cleaner than the Olympics. How's that? Uh, it's How's safer that? than the Olympics because- uh, how's, it, how's it cleaner? Are, You're telling me. <laughs> because athletes are doing things openly uh, and under scientific and clinical supervision. It's not done underground, right? It's not cheating when everyone knows what is happening. Oh, it's cheating all right, because everybody's doing it. Cheating is allowed, basically. That's the theme, isn't it? No, no, no. It can't possibly be cheating. That's exactly what it is. Allowed. Those are the rules. No, it's, it's like, would you call cheating in a um, bodybuilding competition? There are natural federations and there are uh, untested enhanced federations, right? It's an open and level playing field. What the Olympics is today is not a level playing field. Some athletes, people like Lance Armstrong with their own labs and doctors and compounding pharmacies can get a higher advantage and it's all done underground and it's deeply unsafe. So you would say this is this is safe. This is you would even say this is all above board. This is fine. They can do what they want. Absolutely, absolutely. And I believe adults with free and informed consent can choose to do what to their uh, to their bodies what they wish. Right? My body, my choice. Your body, your choice. Do you think the government or some paternalistic sports federation should tell you um, what you can do with your body? Maybe. Should the government tell you how many drinks you can have at the pub on a Friday night? Because no, but Aaron, you know, you, could, you, you, many, concede, you would concede, would you not, that true athletes don't want to be remembered for cheating? Sure, right. True athletes uh, that can compete in the clean, natural, old-fashioned Olympics. And if they believe in science, they can come over to the enhanced games. Well, that's why I said that earlier. We've got the clean Olympics, and your Olympics would be the dirty Olympics. No, we'd be the science Olympics. We'd be about the future. We would be about change. We'd be about technology and um, and scientific progress, right? Look at the kerfuffle that the international sports federations are in at the moment about trans athletes. 
And that's all because they don't know how to deal with social, technological and scientific change. No, that's that's because people are taking ridiculous stances about biological facts. But let's look at the reality of what you're suggesting and the validity of your thinking against the body sovereignty. And I can understand your point of view to some extent, which is basically if everyone is in the same space competing with the same principles, you're, you're suggesting that the Olympics is operated in a certain way. That's because people aren't following the rules. That's why there's an, an unfair balance in that particular sport, and that's not something that should be applauded. It's something that should be condemned. But let's go to your, let's go to your argument about body sovereignty and into combat sports. How far do you take enhancements to the point where... If, you're, if you've got boxing in your in your arena of sports, and I notice that you you don't have it at this moment in time, but maybe you will, you're then p- producing a manufactured outcome and putting people in a way of mortal danger by the level of enhancement that science can bring. Where does the step-off point become in having the validity of thinking against body sovereignty, against real jeopardy? I think individuals are best placed to make that own risk assessment for themselves. Look at Dana White's Power Slap League. Do you condone that? But don't, don't don't give me a what about me. To, to tell the point about the reality, individuals sometimes need to be given guidance because individuals aren't always the best judges of the reality of what is safe for them and what's not because people will put themselves in the way of what they perceive to be the best outcomes irrespective of the costs. That's why you have the costs to them, Not I don't mean financially, but I mean health-wise. There does need to be a form of governance and control that details some degree of, as I say, governance. So again, I go back to the mm-hmm. point. Uh, you, you know, you use the sentiment of body sovereignty as a, an, an example of what people should and shouldn't be allowed to do, but there does need to be some boundaries to this. Absolutely. And, you know, we've built together a world class clinical and scientific advisory board to support this process. And ultimately, the choice about using enhancements is between an individual athlete, an adult athlete, and their doctor. And so if their doctor is willing to sign off that they are medically fit to compete, that's good enough for us. How many athletes have expressed an interest in taking part in this? So prior to the launch, it was very challenging to get athletes to sign up to this program. You know, it's a tremendous act of courage to stand up against the system of corruption and dysfunction that is the International Sports Federation and the International Olympic Committee. I'm pleased to say that we have athletes like Brett Fraser, Christina Smith, Roland Schumann, Olympians all around uh, who are uh, on members of our Athletes Advisory Board. And since we launched just five days ago, uh, we have hundreds of athletes who have expressed interest in joining the Games. And I look forward to uh, announcing that roster in due course. I'm assuming as a matter of principle, you would discourage athletes that are not enhancing themselves to want to compete in your environment. Absolutely not. We welcome natural athletes to come and to compete against. But then, then we go back athletes. to the conversation about jeopardy, and because yours, yours is not yours is not a philanthropic exercise. Yours is a commercial vehicle, right? This is a monetized opportunity, and you see the opportunity for yourself in it. So then we get the balance between the reality of what you're trying to achieve. Your first statement is there is a situation where. We believe people have body sovereignty and we believe that there's a, a a sport at this moment in time that's being prejudiced by some people that are treating themselves in a certain way and finding a way around the rule structure and benefiting themselves from it and others that are not. That makes it an unfair playing field. So we go into your space and we say, OK, let's accept the validity of your argument. I think it's a, a slightly dystopian future, but let's just say you have validity behind your thinking. How would you possibly want then people against the better judgments of conventional thinking to suggest that a clean athlete a person that doesn't want to enhance would be well served going into your environment besides the fact it commercially benefits you no no this is absolutely an individual choice right if a natural athlete believes that they have won the genetic lottery we've talked about about individual choices not being of the best essence all the time so if you're going to make this argument about enhancement and science and the reality of pushing the boundaries and people being able to go to the next level through enhancement why would you think it was sensible and pragmatic to take people that might be slightly misguided in their thinking, a clean athlete, into a space specifically in combat sports where real jeopardy exists? That it is so paternalistic to believe that um, anyone can override the liberty and sovereignty of an individual. An individual is always best place to make risk assessments for themselves as long as there's free and informed consent. Or, or as long as they're properly informed. Absolutely. And 
under our regime, in, um, uh, education about enhancements is much easier. It's much easier to be uh, openly discuss the clinical and scientific challenges and benefits of enhancements because it's open. It's not stigmatized. It's not underground. Aaron, the, the enhanced games, you're going to struggle to find investors for this, sponsors for this, broadcast partners for this. It's never going to go off the ground, is it? Absolutely not. We have had great support from um, venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. I have a 20 year career as an investor and an entrepreneur. Uh, we have term sheets from some of the biggest venture capital funds in Silicon Valley. Why? Because they see the potential of disruption here. <laughs> I'm sure when Blockbuster Video first heard about Maybe they Netflix, invest in pharmaceutical when, companies as well, and that's probably their motivation. But from a, from a commercial standpoint, I struggle to see I understand that you can raise cash on this. I understand the principle of that. But when it starts to become a going concern and you're talking about broadcasters broadcasting it and commercial vehicles being attached to it, which is how broadcasting revenues or broadcasters make their money, I struggle with your thinking there. I understand some of the things that you're saying and I do struggle with the slightly pious attitude you have towards individuals understanding the ramifications of decisions. Yes, and I think that uh, you know we can see from social media that there is an, an intense interest in what we are doing. Well, that's a wonderful um, benchmark, and, social media. Well, you know, social media is the principal driver of uh, content consumption today. The Olympics were designed in a world for broadcast linear television, and that's not how we consume content these days. The legacy sports federations have not done a very good job of adjusting to a technological, scientific, and a socially different future. Who's going to broadcast this, Aaron? We're in talks with broadcasters at the moment. Which, uh, which, which know, ones? I uh, can't name it. We're in commercial negotiations. Digital. Um, and I understand the point there. But is there a, is there a step off point between which substances you would, would you have your own list of substances that you wouldn't allow people to utilize and enhance themselves with? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, so it's a free for all. Uh, anything goes. It's, uh, any, anything goes as long as your doctor is willing to support you in making that decision. Aaron, as, as president of this, the Enhanced Games, I see you've described yourself as an agitator, an agitator, a person who urges others to rebel. That sums you up, doesn't yes. it? Absolutely. And the Olympic Games has been around for 120 years. It has a business model that has not changed. It has gotten unbelievably costly. It's bankrupted nations. Uh, and the athletes of the world, the fans, the broadcasters, they're all unhappy. And we're looking for an alternative here. Who came, and, you who know, came I know up with the title? Is... Who came up with the title, The Enhanced Games? Is that you? Uh, that, that was me, yes. Okay. Aaron, thank you very much indeed. Uh, the Enhanced Games, uh, that was uh, the lawyer Aaron de Souza, who's president. And he intends to launch the first Enhanced Games in December 2024. What do you think, Simon? Is it going to go off the ground? Well, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating, right? And he's a disruptor. He's, think, he's seeking opportunity. If you, if you go into the digital space, you can watch absolute horror. Full stop. So we yeah. know that the digital space is there and there and there. You can. I've got my kid watching someone drop marbles into a bucket of water and getting 20 million views. So we know that there's an opportunity for this. <laughs> the validity of his thinking has some substance because if everybody knows the nature of the game, what his argument is that you're in sports and no one knows who's doing what and people are getting artificial advantages mm. they shouldn't have. So in this space, you're all at it, right? And we accept that that's the space. Now, there'll either be a market for it that really gives him an opportunity to be able to monetize it, which is what his end game is, or there won't. And unfortunately, tragically, Jim, in this in this world that we live in, he will find a launch sequence and a landing space for it. Now, how meaningful it becomes and how valuable it becomes, because we're going to see athletes that have built their careers based upon wanting to be of significant recognition in society. We have spent years and years telling people that enhancement is bad for sport. right? And there is an argument saying safe enhancement and people being, which enhancements are good and which enhancements mm. are bad, right? So there's that argument to be had and that grown-up debate to be had. But we've programmed society to, to, to say that Lance Armstrong is bad, People that have failed drug tests are bad, right? And so now what you're asking people to say is, actually, I want to watch this freak show over here because I want to see how far it goes. And there will be an audience for it. If you, watch, if you watch films like Arnold Schwarzenegger films back in the day when you see those sort of thinking about running man and well, stuff can you, like that, can you, you imagine see it. The, sport, yeah. the sport you love boxing so much, if you can imagine, I know it sounds extreme, but you get, you're going to get there, where two of the best so-called better boxers on the planet are not just great boxers they're now able to do it he, for longer he's not interested more quickly
exactly more repetitive. It, I know he's not. In, all, the, in all due respect to this fella, who's a very bright man, he's not interested in the wherewithal and the well-being of athletes. That's a smokescreen. He sees a commercial opportunity in a space, right, where there exists, right? Like and, he pushed, and he uses science and body sovereignty to validate his argument. Mm. There'll come a point where anabolically, you cannot, anatomically, you cannot allow people to be in combat sports because of enhancements where they're hitting one another with such levels of ferocity that mortality comes to pass. Yeah, but then he's, yeah. what you're what yeah. he's saying is... And he, and he talks about the, doctors. We can talk person. about the same doctor that prescribed drugs to Michael Jackson and say that was the doctor that signed off at him. We, you know, the doctor, right. the, the profession itself... This is getting a very mixed reaction. Adam, I'd watch it. Who wouldn't want to that, see someone running 100 metres in under nine seconds, pushing their bodies to the absolute max? Doping is rife, at least with this lot. They're open and transparent about it. Danny, we'll finish with you before we hit this break. We're late with it, but I'll put it to you. As a former top, top player... And, and, and to that extent, a top athlete. Can you in any way countenance what this guy's trying to get off the ground? It does sound a bit far-fetched and a bit extreme, but actually I, I can see why people would want to watch that in a grotesque way because you're going to see people push themselves to a place we haven't seen people go. Now, if you're saying to me, football's my sport, and I, I, I would, at my best, I would go up against anyone and say, take as many enhancements and drugs as you want and I'll still go up against you, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I would. yeah. Can you imagine why sportsmen or women would want to be indexed to it? Well, that's going to be his biggest problem because as soon as you move over, irrelevant of what you facade you put on, you're so, what, you know what you say, you're looking like you're a cheat before you even start. Yeah. Well, I mean, but in this instance, this isn't about cheating. They don't consider this cheating. This is a level playing field. The reasons why it's cheating is some because some people because can't somebody, do it and some yeah, people can, yeah. right? Some people get an artificial... If you've all enhanced yourself, you've got a level playing field. But in order to get something like this flying, you need big names, mm. right? So you're going to get the guys that have been disgraced. Maybe, you know, if Justin Gatlin was still old enough, he'll, he'll go there because of the potential that there's an opportunity for him there, possibly. But who on, in their right name is a leading athlete that knows that the brand endorsability of his value yeah. and his marketplace yeah. will be diminished. That's his challenge. But n notwithstanding yeah. that, it can st this carnival of horrors, is which I think it really is looking like it is, yeah. will find its level. If you're happy to be stigmatised by it, then you'll, you'll take part in it. Incredible as that sounds. It's 10 to 12. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk sport.